Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be solving a digital forensics challenge. This challenge specifically is going to be about memory dumping or analysis of the memory dump. So memory dump is basically just a file that your computer can generate if a bug happens or something like that because later you can analyze that file and find out what the bug was. Now this can obviously be used by forensics analysts and specialists to actually extract information from the computer because a lot of information can be in the memory dump. So in this challenge we actually have a prepared memory file that has a lot of information in it and all we have to do is download the task file and we can actually verify if the task file is legit because we don't want it to be corrupted. So we want to download the victim.zip and then we can get started. So one thing we're going to use for this is the volatility tool. Now I actually have two versions. One is the volatility 3 uh, built in Python 3 and the other one is volatility 2.6. Now I'm going to be using this one because the Python version seems to be a little harder to use. So let's get into the folder. And once we get into the folder, we're going to see the volatility documentation and stuff like that. But we don't really need to care about this. The only thing we need to care about is the volatility 2.6 lin64 standalone. So all we have to do is run this. There we go. And then after that, we're going to specify which file we want to analyze. So I'm going to say F and then the name of the file is victim.raw. And then after that, we're going to specify the profile. Now, in this case, we don't really have the profile because we don't know which one it is. But don't worry, I'm going to show you how to get it. So right now, what we have to do is write image info. So this is the first command that we're going to run. And this command is going to show us the basic information information and it's going to show us the recommended profile so let's run it you can see the documentation by just running help or something like that obviously this version of volatility isn't just meant to load this kind of file or this file specifically it can load a lot more and it's really capable but one thing you need to keep in mind is if you're going to generate a windows 10 uh, memory dump or stuff like that you need to know how to generate you can't just generate the regular dump based on a windows error just like run not my fault.exe to generate a crash or like bsod the blue screen of death and then get the memory dump because that might not work so the profiles are not maybe installed for this uh, volatility version so keep that in mind so anyways we have the results right here and the first suggested profile is the windows 7 service pack 1 x64 so we're actually going to go ahead and use this one so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to specify profile and then the command that we want to run. Now in this case it says PS list because of the history. But if I take a look at the challenge, the challenge is going to tell us that we need to first find the operating system of the dump file. We found that to be Windows and it seems to work because all of the recommendations for profiles were Windows. So that's easy enough. Now we have to find the PID of the search indexer. Now this sounds scary but don't worry about it. The PID basically means process ID and search indexer seems to be some kind of a process. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this file that contains everything that was in the memory at that moment of a dump creation. And we're going to make sure that we list out all of the processes. So let's run PS list and press enter. This might take a second. For me, this one actually didn't take long, so this is easy enough. So all we have to do is go way back up and uh, see that the PID is right here, the first column. And we're going to take a look at the search indexer. We can actually just slide like this, or we can actually be smart about it and just use grep as well. So let's use grep search search indexer. And if we run this, it should work. There we go. So this is the search indexer and the first one was the PID. So 2180 is the result. And as you can see, this is correct. And then the next question is, what is the last directory accessed by the user? Now we can take a look at the hint right here if we're not sure what we're doing. And it's going to say bag full of shells. Now this reminds us of a specific command that volatility has and it's shell bags. So we're going to run that command and that's going to give us the result. Now if you don't know where to find these kind of commands, there are a lot of cheat sheets online. You can find them easily enough. And also I think there is a link to the cheat sheet in the challenge itself so you don't have to worry about that okay and now the result is here and it gave us a pretty big list of the results now we're gonna have to manually go and take a look through these these are mostly dot that files so nothing special here uh, it doesn't seem the last folder name as it is so we have the user class i've tried to enter the other directories that are specified here before i found the deleted files but it didn't obviously work but that's fine there seems to be a lot of malware installed on this machine so we're probably gonna have to take a look at that too and finally after all this looking we find something suspicious the z which doesn't seem to be a regular drive it seems to be like uh, maybe a USB or something like that logs and deleted files so when I try to delete the files it actually worked so now let's move on to the second part of the challenge we already solved the first one really easy as I told you and now the question is there are many suspicious ports open which one is it if I take a look at the hint right first one it says so let's run volatility but this time with another command let's say that you're not sure about what command to use you can just use the H parameter which stands for help and then grab net and just write net as in network or something like that 
and you can see that there is net scan uh, scan vista or later image for connection and sockets now this is actually what we want to know because we're looking at the open ports so we're going to run net scan and if you run net scan you're just going to have to wait for a second and we will get the results and write the first result okay so we got the results and let's take a look at the results and the first result that we have is actually udp b4 and it's listening on 5005 and that's what we write down and that's where we get the correct answer so the next question is a little bit more complex than the last one it says bad stag and execute protection are strong indicators of malicious processes can you find which they are so this is a little bit confusing at first and the answer says that it has to be a pid 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 so these are process ids as you remember from before and it says there's only three of them so now i've done some digging and i was thinking at first calling the process ps list function um but there's actually an extension called malfind and malfind is actually scanning for malicious activity and it will actually show us the pids for these processes so as you can see we get a bunch of like uh, hex dumps and stuff like that in this assembly code but don't worry you don't have to read this all you have to do is slide all the way up and take a look at what we have here so the first one that we have is the explorer.exe and the first pid is 1860 so make sure you write 1860 and then the semicolon if you don't write this it will not accept the answer for some reason i wrote something else i think it was like a comma or something and it didn't accept it so it has to be a semicolon and if i scroll all the way down the second pid that we have is again the explorer so you can just ignore that and then the next one is the service host so this is 1820 and then you can write that one down as well and here's the hex dump if you want to read this you can and the assembly code so anyways another service host another service host actually and then the last one is actually going to be something else and if you take a look at the uh, pid it's 2464 and if you write this down it's going to be a correct answer now this is the wmp network.exe i don't know what this is but we can take a look at that later if the challenge asks us or if we're just feeling curious so then the next part of the challenge is the last one it's task three and it says in the previous task you identified malicious processes so let's dig into them and find some indicators of compromise iocs uh, you just need to find them and fill in the blanks you may search for them on virus total to discover more details this one at first had me wondering what i could run and what i could do to get as much information as i can but then i remembered that we don't actually have to use the basic command that we just used like this but it was really useful uh, so the challenge actually hinted to us what to do in the next part so in this part so what we actually had to do is remember these pids right here we're gonna have to write them down so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say p and then write them down 1860 and then just a comma and 1820 and a comma and 2464 and then attack d and then a dot so the reason we're putting that d in the dot is because it's going to let's say export it right here so what this is going to do is it's going to generate a new file and you're going to see this right now we're going to need to actually dig root this file in order to you know go further in the challenge uh, so what this did is actually it generated these dot dmp files Okay, so now after like 10 minutes of figuring out why this doesn't work, I realized that I actually ran a wrong command. So let me just fix this. It's not malfind, it's memdump. So we need to separate parts of the memory dump and then put them in the files. And now if I run this, it's going to be fine. If I cat 1820.dump, uh, I can actually see a bunch of stuff. And you know, that's great. So we, at least we have something. So if I string, uh, so strings.dmp file, and you can see a lot of strings. So I'm not going to do this. What we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing and we're going to actually pipe this. So we're going to use so it's taking a look for the site that starts with www.go so that's what we're going to do www.go and if that doesn't work you can actually go grep.ru so as in a .ru this is a russian site so if i do this it's actually going to display the results for me and the searching might take a while because we're searching all the files that are with .dmp and if i take a look at the results it's actually going to say write full url without any quotation marks and as you can see it has four characters in between and if i take a look it's one of those so i thought it's maybe this one or something that but as it says in the hint the site is a little naughty so if i take a look at this one right here that seems to be the one so i wrote that down and that seems to be correct so the next thing is write the full url without any quotation marks it's the same thing we're just going to replace this with dot com and www with dot i and if i run this again it's gonna work there are other ways of doing this but i think strings is just easier and grab is really powerful so might as well just use that so we actually have a lot of results here so we're gonna have to take a look at which one it is and we have four characters in the middle uh, it could be i this one actually it seems that it's the only one starting with i and with four characters as well so we're going to write this down and it seems to work so then the next thing is ic as i said again really easy it's just the same thing to the ic we can actually take a look at these as well and it's this one probably or this one and uh, as you can see the number of stars right here is the number of characters that we need to match and it's actually this one so then we write this down easy as that so now we're going to look at the ips now this isn't any more complex that the urls are so we're going to do the same thing and we're going to actually 
actually isolate just one part of the IP. So let's say 233 and we actually have a dot as well later. So we can isolate 233 and 202 and a dot as well because these are the parts that we know. So we're going to grab the line that has these parts. Just press enter. We already have a match and as you can see this is the correct match. So there we go and now the next one has the same query just a different IP and then the next one after that has the same one. So let's do that really quickly. Now keep in mind that the 164 in this one doesn't have the dot at the end but the 200 that we have actually has two dots so it's going to be really easy to find them. There are some processes found right here so this is a little bit confusing for us but we can pretty much guess which one is the IP so this is the one and we write this down and it's correct. So next thing we have is the 209 and we have 190 so we can actually write down 209 190 and then a dot so we're just going to press enter and we're going to see the result. So now what is the unique environmental variable for PID 2464? So after looking through this, it doesn't seem like the result is right in this file. So what we can do is we can just ignore this memory dump that we created. So we can actually remove them. And we can actually go back to volatility and specify the same function, but we're going to remove this. And we're not going to use memdump. Instead, we're going to use env bars so this means environment variables and if we run this oh I actually misclicked I'm sorry and bars so environment variables but we don't actually need the double V in here so if I press enter we should get a lot of information and if we do get a lot of information just like you did right here we can actually try to use grep to find something that we can use so PID was 2464 so we can actually use this so we can use the same thing and then pipe grep and 2464 easy as that that should give us the result Okay, the only thing that is suspicious right here, if we take a look at these, these parameters right here, you can see common program files, common program files 86 and stuff like that. If you look through all of these, they all seem to look uh, relatively okay, you know, nothing suspicious. But there is something that really does stand out and its value is 1. Nothing that we can actually detect easily, but if I take a look at Google and if I just Google this, So that seems to be this one. So now I've tried the other combinations and it didn't work and it turns out that that's the solution to the case. So then we enter the answer and that's the answer and it is correct and you solved the challenge. This wasn't too hard was it? You just ran a couple of commands, just read some things and it was pretty easy and you basically have a lot of information about the machine. You even looked through the websites visited and stuff like that. It was really cool. All from the memory. Imagine how cool is that. So anyways I hope you guys had fun. I love forensics challenges lately as you probably noticed and I want to thank you guys all for new subscribers and thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.